Roger Goodell, or Goodell, as the case may be, <laughs> speaking to reporters yesterday after this league meeting. Always speak. Look, he's he he doesn't do a lot of media, but I got to give it to him. He always will be available to answer all questions whenever there's a league meeting in this special, unscheduled, unnecessary, but for banging the gavel and approving the sale of the Broncos resulted in Goodell meeting with reporters and taking questions about Deshaun Watson. Here's what Goodell had to say about the ongoing appeal of the six-game suspension. We go back to seeking the full year suspension. Uh, because we've seen the evidence. She was very clear about the evidence. Uh, she reinforced the evidence. Uh, that there was uh, multiple violations here, and they were egregious, and it was predatory behavior. That's, those are things that we felt, um, we always felt were really important for us to address in a way that's responsible. Roger, does the league view it like four different violations of the, the personal conduct policy as opposed well, to one? I think that's the case. That's what the facts. You know, that's rare. That's the good old gaggle. Not even the press conference. I didn't realize it wasn't a press conference. That tells me they were going to try to slip one through the five hole and not have and him talk. They caught him in the lobby. And the reporters and the reporters yeah. are like, here we go. Right. And he knew it was going to be a bad look if he just like acts like he didn't see him and walks away. Right. He uh, wasn't going to. He wasn't playing. I'm, I, I, well, I give him credit. He had no choice. It would have been a bad look if there would have been tweets galore from the reporters who went up there. With the sole purpose of trying to ask him some questions, if he gives him this stiff arm, because, hey, come on, man, every league meeting you talk. So I think they were trying to make sure that he didn't, but at the end of the day, credit to the reporters for doggedly pursuing him and forcing him to answer some questions. And, and here's the bottom line. Yesterday I'm thinking 12 games, $10 million fine. Yeah. That's going to be the end result here. The NFL has been – acting like it wants a full season. So when it gets 12, it looks like it's being reasonable and fair and balanced and measured and the hell with all that. What do you think now? 17. Yeah. They're, he ain't, hey, hey, get a good look at Deshaun Watson in the preseason because we ain't going to see him. Well, we'll I'd, say, I'd, tell him, tell him what you said on text when you first, you know, read the the the, the transcript of that press conference. Well, that you said, well, I'm I'm not sure I can use the language. Well, I've you just, well, I can he's... paraphrase for you, but you basically were like, you know, damn, I don't, I don't know if he might get more than one year. You 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 were starting to think like, well, we we might not see him for for you know 2023. You were getting that was scared Pete. about. Oh, that was, that Pete. was Pete. Okay, I'm getting yeah. confused. Sorry, um, but but either way. With Roger Goodell, those are really strong statements. I, I just think, you know, to, to everything you've been saying and you've kind of been all over this, that uh, the, the, the league is they're, – they're all over this. They're going to make a statement. And the fact that he was willing to go that far right there before we've even heard from Peter Harvey or any final decisions been made, I think it just says where the league's head, head is at in this, in this conversation and that – you know, they're not going to go easy with this because it's as we've talked about before. It's just it's a bad look. It's a bad look. And uh, people were mistreated. I think that's that's the biggest thing for sure. And he lied. And there's a lot of issues there. And he broke a lot of league rules. And I think they're going to make a, a big example of him. You could argue it would have been smart for Goodell to defer any comment because the appeal process is pending. Yeah. And I won't comment until this process is over because the union could now argue that. He's, but see, they can't. he's influencing they can't. it. Well, well, but if if he were handling the appeal himself, he wouldn't have said anything because they would say he's prejudged it, et cetera. Yeah. But they, they've agreed to let him either handle the appeal personally or delegate it to his handpicked designee. And he has. And P P I'm, I'm sure whatever he's saying publicly, Peter Harvey has already heard Privately, I know the league said Harvey's had no prior involvement in the Deshaun Watson situation before he was designated the task of handling the appeal. I choose not to believe that because I choose to apply common sense to the situation. When you have a guy who helped draft the policy, when you have a guy who has regularly advised the NFL on these matters, you're not going to wall him off when you're in the formative stages of crafting your approach because maybe he'll be the guy that I eventually designate to handle the appeal. So we have to keep Peter out. I mean, why would you? Why would you even think that? 
Of course, Peter Harvey's been privy to what the commissioner thinks. Of course, he knows what the commissioner wants. And oh, by the way, if he didn't before yesterday, he sure as hell does now, based upon what Roger Goodell had to say. So I, it's they, ha, they have the power. See, I don't know what the union's thinking here. Give me just 30 seconds yeah, to try to ahead. summarize this. They got caught up in the idea that they were able to convince Judge Robinson to only give six games, even though the facts were as bad as they were. And they thought maybe they could parlay that into some sort of a PR play that would get the NFL to say, well, we'll respect the decision of Judge Robinson. Look, they agreed to hand this power to the commissioner. They agreed two years ago, after everything that had happened in the prior decade, with Tom Brady and Ezekiel Elliott and the court cases that happened, arm's length collective bargaining, they agreed to craft this very procedure. They think that the new CBA gives them a better case in court. If they get there, I think it gives them a weaker case in court because if I'm the judge, I'm saying, hey, look, you're citing to me all these past cases and you sat down and you agreed to this procedure that deliberately gives the commissioner the ability to handle the appeal or to delegate it to anyone in the world that he chooses to do so, and it's final and it's binding and there's no deference of any kind given to the legal analysis engaged in by the, the disciplinary officer? You agreed to this. Why are you taking up my time? I think it's, I think it's dead on arrival if they try to take this thing to court. I, I will agree with you there. There's no doubt. There's I, it just doesn't, you know, I'm no lawyer. I'm, you know, not in the weeds with some of this stuff, but I, I, I just... I don't feel like we've ever seen anybody win in this instance, taking the NFL to court. I mean, you're right. It, it's there. The, the laws of, of the land have already been written as far as the NFL between the NFL and the NFL PA. And uh, I'm, I'm with you. And, and, and I would think just with those strong statements. And like you said, Peter Harvey working with the NFL before, there's no way you could be so insulated that you don't have a clue about what's been going on with the Deshaun Watson case, whether you're just a casual football fan or not even a football fan. Yeah, you know, I, I feel like this is, this is something that everybody knows about at this point because it's crossed over the line of football, and that's where I think the NFL knows that. It's crossed the line of football here. This is like – world country issue and that's you know makes it even a worse look and I think for those reasons yeah I'm, I'm with you you know maybe 12 I th games I think, but I, I I'm with you in the fact that I think it's going to be 17. I think what's happened here is lawyers connected to the union have gotten in the ears of certain reporters and they make their case and they make it persuasively because they're lawyers and they're good about making their case. And if you're not a lawyer who can push back or point out the flaws in the argument, you're just kind of like, wow, that sounds pretty good. I'll just go. I'll run with that. You sound very convinced. You make a good argument. I'll run with that. And I, I just I, I think that that it's a lot of wishful thinking. And they, they are doing a good job of working the PR side of it to get some arguments out there and to kind of create yeah. the sense that because people are still saying, why didn't you respect the decision of Judge Robinson? Well, because it's it says it on paper. You, you, the NFL can appeal. it. I mean, either side can appeal. It's what Goodell said yesterday. Either side can appeal. it. They, they exercise their right to appeal, period. And they appeal it to Goodell or his designee, period. The union agreed to that. They didn't have to agree to that. They didn't have to. They could have said, no way. We're never agreeing to this. We'll go on strike if we have to. I mean, it's a, it, they wouldn't have. No. But they could have. Yeah. And the NFL had the stronger will here. The NFL said, this is what we want. The well, NFL got it, and they agreed to it. Right. This, is what, this isn't a parent negotiating with a child. This is two adults, and they made their agreement, and, and they got to live with it now. It'll never the change. The has to live with it now. It'll never um, change. You know, we, we, did, we hit on this yesterday, right? That, that was we, we talked about this a little bit. It's just... You know, the NFL players, their careers don't last long enough to strike. You know, the, the only guys that can afford to strike and maybe miss some time are the guys that have made significant money and been around the NFL a little while to go, okay, I can sit back for, you know, eight weeks, a year. If Even then, that's a lot of, you're giving up is. a lot of money. It's a ton of money. That exactly right. Bracket. And you're right. Yeah. And then when you know, like, wait, it doesn't matter. I'm, uh, whoa, okay, wait, I only have a few more years no matter what to play football. And that's why. You know, the union and the NFL is just not as strong as baseball or basketball for that matter. And I don't think I don't ever see the owner or the owners of the NFL giving up this right. They're always going to have final say to protect the shield. And uh, that's what they're going to do in this case. For as much as the world has changed in the last 35 years, the strike of 87 continues to resonate. The league knows that when push comes to shove, guys are not staying away. Guys are not forfeiting. 
their limited window of time when they are young enough and healthy enough to play football. Well, yeah. They're not going to give it up right. for some vague interests for future players that they're not going to be exactly the beneficiaries of they're just not going to do it no. and the and the league and it's surprising to me chris that the league doesn't push it even harder they probably could because they could yeah they could you're right they probably could but there's a line there where they probably go wait now we look like we're like real jerks and we're taking advantage of people but hey go back to that. About that yeah i know well it does have some optics that i think they got to worry about a little bit uh, I do, but but at the same time, I think that you know you bring up eighty seven, and I, I mean that that is that's the perfect example. The best player in football crossed the line and said, "I need the money. I gotta play, right?" And I know people that are out there. Whoa, they're NFL. I, I always hear that. Oh, they're NFL football players. How much money do they need? All right, when you've come from nothing and you're on a rookie contract. And you make, okay, over, let's say you've made $10 million, like we've discussed this before, $5 million, boom, gone. You have nothing. we got to remember, these are people that have nothing more times than not. And then, whoa, it's $5 million. Wait, let me get myself a house. Whoa, my mom, let me improve her life, get her a house. Oh, okay, I got myself a car. Let me get my mom a car. Okay, well, oh, man, I got an aunt and an uncle who also got nothing, and I'm trying to help them out. And more times than not, listen, I've seen this. My own father, I mean, he came from a family of eight in Kentucky, and he was always doing that. So now, you know, the, the world likes to judge the athlete and go, well, they made all this money. Well, they've come from nothing, and now they made their, their lives, you know, their family a little bit more comfortable and better, but they got to still keep making money. They've lost all their money. Not lost it, but they spent it all already on good things to improve their life. And like we were talking about, it's a short period of time. And that's where, you know, it is rough. And that's where the NFL is just an absolute brutal business as a player. You know, we know what we signed on for, but, but it doesn't make it not brutal. That's for sure. Back to the Browns, Jimmy Haslam, the owner of the team, along with his wife, Dee, said yesterday that the Browns will respect and honor the Deshaun Watson appeal process. I don't know that they're going to be happy with the outcome. Now, last week they were trying to get the league to respect the decision of Judge Robinson. My guess is there was probably a fairly pointed communication from 345 Park Avenue to Berea, Ohio, about that because I already had enough to worry about, Jimmy, with the union trying to shame me into accepting this. I don't need one of my members trying to play this same game with me i understand you want your new investment available but you understand that there's a greater good here that we're trying to deal with so please back off with that crap and now we have respect and honor and we'll, we'll, we'll see what they have to say yeah when peter harvey issues his decision we'll see if they respect it and honor hi i'm mike tarico and thanks for watching make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from nbc sports